Today's episode of The Mom Game is brought to you by our friends at Gateway Buick GMC at LBJ and Jupiter. I know that buying a car can be stressful, but not at Gateway because their slogan is, Gateway's got it. And just what does that mean? Well, it means Gateway's got a wide selection of new Buicks, GMCs, and GM certified used vehicles, all competitively priced. Gateway's got it. In these busy times, you want a dealer who makes things easy and convenient. Well, guess what? Gateway's got it. When you log on to gatewaybuickgmc.com, look for the shop, click, drive button. This allows you to shop from the comfort of your home, and who doesn't want that? In fact, it's as easy as one, two, three. One, select your vehicle. Two, create your offer. Three, schedule your delivery. And on top of all this, Gateway Buick GMC offers complimentary car washes for life. So when you want a dealer who has it all, Gateway's got it. You can find them online at gatewaybuickgmc.com or shop in person at LBJ and Jupiter. GMC, we are professional grade. Experience the new Buick. And welcome. What you got over there, Em? Episode 100 of the Mom Game. We did it. Epi 100. <laughs> like Super shortened. Yeah. Thanks to our friends at Noble Vines. We have a lot Wine. of friends here today. To Lots celebrate. of friends. Noble Vines Wine is the presenting sponsor of our 100th episode. We are mm-hmm. thrilled to have them on board. Um, thrilled to have them as a part of the family. Mm-hmm. And Julie, what do you do when you celebrate? I pop champagne. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> there it is. 100. Still scares me. We 100 episodes later. 100. <laughs> I'm still scared of um, champagne yeah, popping. Yeah, so we're so excited. We made it 100 we made episodes. It 100. And I feel like we're we're actually starting to um I don't know, figure some shit out. Starting to. I mean a little bit. Maybe by 200 Not a lot. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, 200 we're going to be totally squared away. You're going to mm. pour this yourself. Okay. I have I'm tennis have elbow. To walk. I have tennis elbow. You don't have enough. You don't play enough tennis. That, tennis elbow. I c- couldn't agree with you more. I don't have tennis elbow. Or and I'm not good enough to at tennis to have tennis elbow, but I do have it. So huge, huge show today. We have two very, very special guests um, that I am so excited to have with us and celebrate our 100th episode. And um, yeah, we're just gonna kind of take a look back and um, you know get in our regular stuff, but. 100. 100. I'm, I'm proud of us. I'm proud of us too. It um, only took us, you know, 97 to get in our first f- fight. And then now, <laughs> our first fight. We're already over it. We're already episode over it. Episode 100. So, Thank M, goodness. I'm going to interview you. Oh, okay. Um, episode one. Oh, I don't even remember it. Well, you remember the act of doing episode one, right? Yeah. What were you thinking? Like, what were you thinking about this? Did you think we would make it 100 episodes? What did you think it was um, going to be? Well, I felt I felt really awkward. I remember. I just uh-huh. it just it's a, it's an awkward feeling that you can, it takes a little while to get used to the whole, you know, the podcasting. Like, you know, I'm used to when I'm on television. It's like for one minute, maybe 90 seconds, and you know, it's pretty mm-hmm. not scripted, but I've got bullet points of what I want to say, and then mm-hmm. you know, toss it back up to Dave and CJ. So it's like now to just have this ability to kind of. I don't know. But sometimes I was Free like, flowing. this is, God, we're boring. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, like, this is, is anybody listening to this? Like, does this anyone on find this? Bueller. Does anyone find us entertaining? Um, but yeah, I don't, were we in here? Where were, I don't even remember. No. I literally don't. We should go back and watch episode one. Yeah. Uh, we weren't in here. We were somewhere else. We didn't have the cool backgrounds. It oh, was that's like right. Those, we were on the ball. We were on the third floor. That's right. Same building. Same building. Different floor. Different floor. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Vocals come a long way too, baby. Vocal has come a long way, baby. Um, I know. It, and, and just to like get back to the root of it, like this is something that I felt like this is exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, and what I wanted it to be, you know, a hundred episodes in, it was like after working at the ticket, it was like, ah, I just want something like this, but like that's female driven and I want Emily to do it. And I want to like rely on all of these relationships that we've built up with people over the years um, that would want to come on our show and have a conversation that's different than a conversation that they would have on any other show. Um, and I feel like that's exactly what's happened. And our, our guest today for the 100th episode is so, um, that just is symbolic of exactly what I was talking about, because it's someone that you knew that, that, that trusted you to come in here with his wife. And I just think it's awesome. And I'm, I'm still so grateful 
that you came on this journey, especially not having any idea what I was yeah. doing or talking about or what it was going to turn into. But it's just been awesome. And I'm, I'm, I feel like 100 is just kind of the beginning. Still. Yeah, I do too. I do too. And I, I'm so glad you talked to me into it. Like I said, um, a million times after I tried to tell you no and uh, you wouldn't take no for an answer. And so I'm glad you talked me into it. Uh -huh. And um, I'm thrilled to be here. I can't imagine doing this with anyone else but you. Um, so yeah, it's been fun. It's fun and cheers to 100. Cheers to 100. Cheers to 100. And you mentioned our sponsors, but like, thank you. Like, thank oh. goodness we talk about the, the guests coming on and believing in us, sponsors believing in us. They're putting their money They're where their mouth their is. They're putting their money where their mouth is and, yes. and they trust what we're doing and, and they like it. And I think it is different and organic and real and, and sponsors, especially these days, want to be associated with that kind of thing, like realness and, and conversations that people want to hear. So a big thank you to them. Another big thank you to Noble Vines. They've done such wonderful things for us with our launch party. Um, Gateway, obviously, like our title sponsor. Yep. Um, Yo Kiro, we love Tara over there. And mom, uh, you know, we I love working with other moms who just get it. And she yeah, just we're going to talk it. about their new product a yes. little bit later yes. in the show. We are, but it's there. So yeah. addressing the elote in the room. Yeah, but today's episode is joke? um what. The, oh, the elote instead of the elephant. Mm -hmm. All right. I had to address the elote. In the I room. like it. You, okay, okay. I like <laughs> no, it. No, you don't like well, it. Wait, you don't I like it. it. Okay. No, I like it. I like it. Thanks. Um, yeah. So <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about Noble Vines because they have been with us pretty much from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then when we threw out like, who does anybody want to sponsor our 100th episode? And Noble <laughs> Vines is like, we we're are in. in. They're awesome. Um, we've gotten to know them personally. Noble Vines. One of the things we love about them is that they aim to bring out the best in wine and in people. And when when they say that they mean it because we've had conversations with them. We've had meetings with them and that's always top of their list is like, okay, how are we going to give back? Like what charities do you guys want to support? This is what we want to support because it's something that really is at their core values. And I love that. Um, outside of that, the wine is really good. Their vine stocks originate from highly coveted vineyards in France, selecting the best of those vine stocks, cultivating them in California is what has earned Noble Vines, their quality reputation. Everybody I introduced Noble Vines to loves it. Everybody in my family, I, I always say, even up in Canada, my family there now buys Noble Vines. My family in Missouri, or my friends in Missouri buy it. My friends in Austin, everybody loves it. Uh, the 337 Cabernet Sauvignon, which is over there. Uh, with its rich, full-bodied style, aromas of cherry and blackberry and suave tannins invite you to share something meaningful and pour some good into the world. That's what we try to do. That's what our guest today tries to do. That's what Noble Vines tries to do because they have a deep-rooted desire for good. They're a proud supporter of the uh, North Texas Food Bank and the Do It For Dirt Foundation. Yes, they And are. as with any alcoholic beverage, must be 21 or over. Noble Vines, Napa and Manteca, California. Please drink responsibly. And that's what we're doing today. Yes, we are drinking responsibly. Uh, it's such an exciting time. And I think, uh, you know, like I said, we're going to look back a little bit. But we have, uh, we got a special, little special thing here mm -hmm. that we, well, we'll have to pull back the curtain because it's it's not like we have like <laughs> our, a producer our team, that will like. Our a, team of yeah, editors and will, like, staff. Right. <laughs> right. Like, you know, usually it's do we like, have the video? Hey, we don't, we, yes, we do. Yeah, we do. Okay. Um, but it's, it's, you know, usually it's like, oh, you know, you know, I'm planning this thing for Julie. Can you help me? It's, we're just like, yeah, we're kind of putting just, ourselves yeah, out I'm like, Hey, so do you mind congratulating us on our 100th episode? <laughs> I know it's kind of awkward. And, Someday we'll be able to afford right. like a Gelman. Yes. Like someone who books people for us and who yes. ask them to say, you know, make a video saying nice things about us. <laughs> But in this case, it was just us asking people to say Why nice not? things about us. I'm like, oh, whatever. What's it going to do? So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the well wishes that our past guests have sent us here on episode 100. Well, hello, Julie and Emily, a.k.a. Mom Game. Hey there, Emily and Julie. This is your old pal, Pat Green. Emily and Julie, it is Sean Lowe. Hey, Julie and Emily, it's Lance. Hi, Julie and Emily. Many, many congratulations on your 100th podcast. Congratulations to Emily McCoy and Julie Dobbs on the 100th episode of the Mom Game podcast. I'm so proud of you guys. 100 episodes of the Mom Game. Well, I wanted to give you a huge congratulations on 100 episodes of the Mom Game. As on 100 episodes of the Mom Game. And I want to say congratulations on 100 episodes. What an amazing accomplishment. Thanks for the laughs. Thanks for the great conversations. 
You bring relevance and fresh ideas to the table with a delicious sense of humor. Wait, what are we doing? Uh, well, this we is... need to do the uh, video. Oh, well, we're doing the video right oh, now. For Julian, uh, that's, yeah. that's exactly what we're doing right oh, the now. The video. Hi. Yeah. I'm so proud of you two ladies. I've seen firsthand the hard work that you put into your careers, into your lives, into your families. Uh, by far, the highlight of my life was being asked to be on the mom game. Well, when do you want to start? Count, count me no, in. No, count me in. Okay, three, two, one. Hey, oh. Hey, mom game. Hi, Julie and Emily. You guys are the best. A hundred episodes. One hundred huh? episodes. So How cool. about that? Thanks for being a voice of light and fun in a tough time. Y'all are just the people who showed up exactly when we needed you. So congratulations again. Can't wait to see what the next hundred are like. Keep doing what you're doing. Here's to another 100 episodes. Man, I'm really proud of myself if I can do 100 of anything. Uh, proud of you guys. Love you both. Congratulations. 200th episode. 150 or two? They didn't do 50. So Five, yeah. Probably 500, 500 the next time. Okay, well, we'll see you we'll in have 400 more episodes. <laughs> and we're done. Bye. So proud of you. You're doing great. Can't wait for 100 more. And just remember, uh-oh. There's a little wine stain on this, but OMG, my mother was always right about everything. And Emily, uh, fruit doesn't fall far from the trees. Sorry about the blinds. <laughs> We've got a lot, to, a lot to celebrate. I know. It feels so here we go. It feels real good. Oh, oh. Are you oh. good at this? <laughs> it always scares me. Okay. Does it? Yes. I can't even open biscuits. So super sweet. Thanks to those who responded to our text messages for, you know. You're our number Videos. one. Yes, we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And uh, anytime any of you want us oh, to end. tell you how much we love you on a video, just ask. <laughs> just let us know. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine if Pat Green's like, hey, Emily, can you make me a quick video talking about how cool I am and how much you love me? Sweet. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pat was one of the fun ones. I loved our moms. Our moms. Uh, my mom. <laughs> God bless her. <laughs> you could tell she wrote it out. How is she your mom? Like, she, how is she my mom? Um, she's hilarious. Well, you mentioned the fan, the ceiling the fan. The ceiling fan. The, the camera angle was not the best. But you could tell she like took the time and she like wrote a script. She had a little script. She, that was very sweet. She's precious. She's, I love that we've included our mom. She's in she this is whole precious. Thing. And I will tell you, she was wondering, she was like, Can I just come over and have you shoot it? And I'm like, no, part of the charm of this is the fact that you know, we're looking slightly up your nose and seeing the ceiling fan also. Right. Like, you know what I mean? And it's you're, a home video. It's a it's it was adorable. So it was I and thought my the mom moms even were came cute. with jokes. Oh, she totally trolled me on the blind. Yeah, she did. And I point could, mom could not have loved it more. I yeah. was so proud of Anne. I was like that <laughs> as soon as I saw the blinds, I was like, that little bitch. <laughs> She's gonna make a blind joke here. She did make a blind uh, she joke. She did, and I completely support it. One hundred. The blind jokes will live forever. Oh, we forever. moved on, but we, the blind oh, jokes will live forever. Yes, it's part of us. Yes, it's part of us now. It Not is, just it, you. Yeah. You're it's right. Part of us. The blinds are the part blinds of us. are part of us for sure. Yeah, and then Sean Lowe. Yes. God bless him. Went out in like a blizzard or something. And Mike and Donnie, <laughs> were they 22. in a hurricane of some sort? No, like, they were in that wind tunnel that I always tunnel. talk about. What a great place to shoot a video. Is it a wind tunnel? Isn't that a great place? Yeah, it is. But it I is. know how it was. It was like Mike and Donnie leaving for uh -huh, the day. And Donnie uh -huh. like, oh, gosh, I almost forgot. Julia, yeah. Jules asked for this video. Yeah. And Mike's like, what video? Yeah. And then they do their whole little charade. Those guys are all um, at the Super Bowl right now, which is fun to listen to. Yeah. I'm having a little bit of FOMO, but I was I glad. Know. Not that I would have been at the Super Bowl, but um, I was glad we had this this week because every time I have a little ticket FOMO, I'm like, no, think about yeah. all the stuff, cool stuff that yes. we're doing. We're having so much fun, which brings us to sports courts. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll start with the Super Bowl. It's coming. Mm -hmm. um, last I checked, it was on a Sunday. Can we talk about the Super gonna Bowl? Like, can I think we it's say gonna the happen. Super Bowl? I don't know. Yeah. No one's told us not to. I don't think we matter. You Do you think the NFL's watching? You think the um, NFL is listening to this? Roger Goodell. Well, they might when they oh, hear when who they our find guest out is. Oh, our no. guest is. 100, show 100 is going to be our last because we talked about Super Bowl oh. and the NFL is going to watch it. That's why when I was talking about it on social media, I was talking about the extraordinary sporting event coming mm -hmm. up on Sunday. <laughs> Did you like that? That made me laugh. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was actually like confused by, I, I am confused because then, because when I was doing a clip, I wrote Super Bowl and I was like, is that okay? And then I started looking around and like, like all the news articles, so, news outlets say Super Bowl. News. So what, what I learned when I was doing like um, local TV, yeah. local sports in Lubbock 
was that you couldn't say Super Bowl like no, you could say it if you're like reporting news events. Okay. But if you're using it for advertising purposes, you cannot say it. So like if someone's having, if you're having a Super Bowl party at your house and you're making money on it, you can't call it a Super Bowl party oh, and advertise. Wow. Okay. And advertise. Right. You can cut you. That's why if you're on, if you hear spots on the radio and it talks about the big game, all that crazy yeah. stuff. So they yeah. have to protect the integrity of those commercials that cost a yes. million dollars. Yeah. So we're going to run through Super because Bowl. we, we have our, um, why, this is why I don't wear my hair down. Cause this is all I do is I catch like, why? don't worry about I it. I can't, but my hair's so bad. It's it, so it bad good today. But when, and then I, I, if there was anything I could do to change our situation, it would be for me to just put like a you blanket, can put a piece of paper over, over yourself. here to where I can't see because then I, and it's not that I'm being vain. It's not like, Oh my God, look at me. I look so good. It's like, Oh my God, look at my hair. It looks, I, oh my, I look like a drowned rat. Like what's happening. Yeah. This is what happens. Do you not do that? Or do you just, I can't. Cause uh, I'll, I immediately, when I see myself, I just like, I'm starting to criticize, like well, not criticize, like we all know I have a hair complex. I know. Um, and so it's just, can we work through that? The hair complex. Yeah. I don't, it's, it's a part of me. <laughs> it's, it's a part of me, but yeah, I mean, I'm okay with it. Like I used to your be sad looks about good it right now. Well, like if, have you ever thought that your hair looks good? No, no. <laughs> there was one time when I got a blowout. One time. One time. <laughs> one time in your whole Loved life. It. Loved it. You're Loved 25 it. years. Luckily I took headshots that day. So I can, it's like captured and, and I put it, put them out there on everything. And then people Same. see me in real life and they're like, Same. oh dear. I laughed. Cause we were, we're going on another podcast next week and we were supposed to send oh, headshots right. and we both said like, oh, glamour shots. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, me. I, I mean, mine's so old, I'm but so I love that version of myself yeah. and I want it to live forever. And if someone's yeah. going to ask me to send a photo, you're damn right. I'm going to send that photo. That photo. That the I love. best one. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. not going to send what I look like I most of the time I know. Yeah. in my sweatpants and hair up. Uh -huh. And yeah, yeah, that's okay. Distraught mom. Um, okay. So the Super Bowl, the, the big game, Super Bowl, extraordinary uh -huh. sporting event is uh -huh. coming up. Uh, yeah. I think we, we hit on it last week. I don't think there's any, any insight we could provide with two weeks leading up to the Super Bowl of people who like are covering the NFL on a regular basis. So I don't think we really need to, you know, go no. through the all 22 of think the Bengals either. versus and the Rams, but I just want to get our picks. I think we need to go on record oh, okay. about who is going to win. Okay. And I think we need to involve the spread. I feel like it's like four, four and a half. Oh dear. So okay. the Rams are giving up four and a half. Uh huh. So the, remember this conversation. The yeah, Bengals. Yeah, remember the conversation. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. Okay. So the Bengals, they had the the Rams have to win by five or more in order for them to cover. Okay. Okay. So the Rams you, aren't going to cover. You don't think the Rams are going to cover? Yep. All right, I'm taking the Rams. Okay. We should make a bet. Okay. Um, we'll figure out the stipulations later. But we're making a bet. You're taking the Bengals. I'm taking the Rams. And we'll figure out what's on the I, line. I know. A I tattoo? Do we I just thought like I get to do your hair or something for oh. the next episode or you get to do my hair. Okay. Something like. <laughs> okay. So we, we can, we can. Or tattoos. Yeah. I mean, like, like put my, my name somewhere on your body. <laughs> vice versa. Emily on no, my forehead. My, okay. Maybe not. Wouldn't it be funny to do each other's hair? Um, sure. No. Did you ever see the video that the Rangers did when. It was me and Rugi, and they. I had to put my hands behind my. This is so wheels off sounding. Put my hands behind my back, and uh -huh. then he slid his. Oh arms yeah, up I used through. to do that all the time as a kid. Right. Wait, he slid his arms. It, his arms, and he was putting on my makeup. Oh my god! And gosh. so they did a video of this. I don't know why I said yes to this. I need to because dig that up hilarious. and find it. I mean, if Rugi says yes, Ru you need to I say know, yes. but he's not the one looking like an idiot. But he and, I, and I'm like at, the, at one point I was like this was all happening, and I was like. I'm 40 <laughs> and, the, and this is what I'm doing. And this is my job. Like, but that makes it more awesome I, right. that you're 40 and that that's your job. I'm 40. How many I, people would kill and for I'm a 25 to be making a dumb... baseball player behind me with his arms, putting on my makeup, hiding behind my back. Like, where's my life gone? Like what is happening? Gone I'm right finding direction. that video. I'm finding that video. Well, I'm making it. I brought my, I brought notes today. Oh, look at you. Yeah, we are so 100 organized. Episodes. I okay. thought you were going to talk about when, did you ever do the thing where like you'd have a girlfriend? <laughs> yes. And the legs and they kick up. So awesome. So should, awesome. Should we do that? <laughs> we should not do that. It is funny though. The legs like I'd have to be, I could not be the legs. I would have to be on, on top. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know we're, it's, we're, it's, Why it, we're, could you not be the legs? I, I, I'm not very flexible. I'm not, I can't kick very good. 
feel like that's kind of <laughs> okay. Weren't you I'll some kind of dancer legs. or something? I was a cheerleader. Cheer- oh, I was too in high school. Yeah. In college. I'll be anyway. the legs. You okay? You be the because whoever is the face is the one that actually is attached to it. Like I can separate myself and say, like, "What legs? Ah. Not my legs. Somebody else is like standings." Um, okay, we got to get through sports. We've got to get to our guest I because he's it's I'm right. having fun though. I know it's fun. Well, but I just want we gotta stay on task. Okay, so the Super Bowl's happening. You pick the Bengals. Establish that. I pick the Rams. I don't know why the I Mavericks. The it's probably gonna be wrong. That's but. okay. I like Joe Burrow. Yeah. I remember we talked about it. Yeah. Um. So Mavericks seem to be playing well. Stars have been off, but they are getting back at it. Still on the fringe. Tonight. They had a break. They had a break. They had a break. How was that in the Dobbs household? You know, um, Forbes Dobbsy. It was <laughs> Forbesy. I don't know. It was great. I'll get to that though. In what's on your feed? Mm. Okay, um, perfect. But yeah, the Stars are playing tonight. They're four points out of a playoff spot. They had a terrible loss going into the break against Calgary because it was a four-point game that they needed to win. They were winning with like a few minutes to go and like totally as the bed, gave up three goals in a matter of a, I don't know, three minutes. It was something like that. I quit watching because I've seen this happen with this team too many times. It's like for whatever reason, they think they are already in Cancun. Or oh, no. wherever they're going, um, and the Flames are still playing hockey. Um, and so that was kind of shitty <clears throat> because it was a bad way to go into the break. But all of that being said, they're four points out of a playoff spot behind Calgary in the, after that four-point game, if that tells you how important that game was. yeah. Um, but they've still got... I saw something the other day. It was quite depressing. It was like, the stars are halfway through the season. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Just halfway. Yes. Yes. Oh, for the love. They're just past like a th- the halfway point. Um, so we'll see. I mean, the, the, the jury's still out and yeah. they can either, I, I don't know. I, I can't say either way that I think they're going to tank or I think they're going to go on some sort of wonderful run. I still don't really know. Okay. Um, but they're in it. Yeah. Well, and that's, listen, if you would have told me halfway through the Rangers season last year, yeah. they'd still be in it. I would have taken it. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Well, we'll stay tuned. At least there's, at least they're not, like you said, they're still in it. They're still in it. Uh, Mavs are still fun to watch. Start, yeah. We're still hanging on. We, we're, we're doing okay. I'll tell you my Mavs, my quick Mavs take. It's like, or how I feel emotionally about the Mavs. It's like, I'll read about the Mavs upcoming game on Twitter and it's like, blah, blah, blah. KP's not out tonight. And I'm like, I'm not going to watch. Like I want to get excited about watching a damn game with the full team the there. Team. And I want to like really start getting into this team, but I'm not because we don't have the full complement of players ever, whether it's Luca or KP, Luca or KP, Luca or KP. I do need to give them a little bit more of my attention though, because Luca is still playing. The Mavs are playing. Jalen Brunson's playing well. Yeah, and he's playing They're winning. A, Luca's playing at a really Luca's, high level. Luca's yeah. playing at a really high level. So I, I apologize, Mavs. I need to give them. I know, I'm right there with more you. of my attention, though. But Me I'm like, I, I want to watch like this team that the team that they have the potential to be and that we all want them yeah. to be. Yeah. And I've told you before, it I takes me a lot you. to like sit and watch a whole sporting event. I these know. Days. Yeah, I think it. Well, so if I'm I like, if he's not there, I'm not I, there. Either. I'm out. Yeah. If he's not going to make a commitment. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, OK, we're going to talk MLB in the news desk. Mm-hmm. But before the news desk, we've got you alluded to it just a second ago. Yes, I did. What's on your feed, which is brought to us by Bottle Rover, which just happened to also bring us Noble Vines wine. Oh, they so did. And yes. I documented this whole thing on our Instagram because we used Bottle Rover to deliver our Noble Vines wine for today. I didn't, didn't even have to get up and um, leave my house. Yeah, because you were too busy watching the Mavs and doing laundry. Yes. Yeah. We love Bottle Rover. They are now my go-to alcohol delivery app. They make it easier than ever to search for your favorite liquor, beer, or wine on demand. Based on your location, they are now offering free delivery on all orders over $50. It is super simple. I've used it now a couple of times. Um, We've talked about it in the past, just how sometimes you don't have what you need at any given moment. And it's not like you're going to say, hey, kids, let's all pile up in the car to go get mom some wine. You just have to be a little more discreet about it. And you can do that with Bottle Rover. They're a Dallas based, which is huge. We like supporting local businesses, alcohol delivery platform that offers free delivery on all orders over $50. Um, You can shop any of your favorite stores. Specs is the one that's close to my house. And the whole process was really seamless. Um, 
So you can search your favorite beer, wine, or spirits all from your mobile device. You got to go to bottlerover.com or download the app, which is available on your cell phone, just like any app. Search your favorite alcohol. You order it. It comes. You pour a glass. Cheers. Thank you, Bottle Rover. So if you're listening, just download that bad boy on your phone, and then you'll be able to get your alcohol and I'm sure forever. Yeah, everyone's busy right now. Um, everyone's but busy. it is the week of the extraordinary sporting event that will be played on Sundays. Just get on the app right now, order your alcohol, yeah. have it delivered. That is one thing you, you can, can schedule it out. Check off your list. What yes. is an extraordinary sporting event without your alcohol without. I mean, let's be real. I mean, everybody's just yeah, have a little cocktail to <laughs> yes. loosen things up. Yeah. Okay. So you alluded to it. What's on your feed? Give yes. me back. Give me back my computer. Let me first. give you back your computer. You. So what's on my feed? Um, <clears throat> and this is going to be. We've talked about how this can be my feed, your feed, whatever Anybody's feed, feed. But this is going to be my feed. Okay. Um, because I was doing a whole bunch of stories. I'm having fun posting stories. I'm posting a lot more. Good for you. I'm because trying. I just. Well, you know why I don't like it? It's because I have to see myself while well, I'm don't talking. Look. Just don't look. Ugh, it's so annoying. Okay, go ahead. Um, I don't know. It's just, I'm just kind of having fun. Good. Posting. And I like, I'm getting into like all the like. Oh, and you're editing yeah. and you're doing fancy stuff. Oh, dude. I'm, I'm so proud of you. I'm trying it. Like if you've seen our clips on social media, Adam does a lot of them. Julie has started dabbling in the dabbling. editing thing. Yeah. You're killing it. Like Thank you. music and music that Thank fits you. and then work captions. Yeah. Well, and every once in a while, can I, can I tell you? Yeah. Can I tell you a secret? Yeah. Can I tell you, like, be honest yeah, with go you? Go for it. So like, sometimes there'll be like a word capitalized in the middle of a mm-hmm. sentence. And then I'm like, you, Molly Jones, you shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> Julie is over here learning a new fucking skill that you have no idea how to do. So shut your pie hole about your stupid grammar and your capitalization. And don't you dare say a word to that girl. Well, thanks. So I want you to say, I want you to know that I don't give one F how many punctuation errors there are. You know why? Because I don't know how to do what you're doing. Yeah. And I appreciate the fact that you are learning it and you are challenging yourself. And yeah. my ass is probably not going to. So you don't kudos to. to you, honey. And you get after it Thank and you. make uh, and do all the things. And Thank I you. don't care about AP style and all well, the shit I learned in journalism school. Hey. I don't care. And I'm proud of you. And I think Thank you're you. effing killing it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. Um, I know that in the last clip, I spelled likable two different ways. Didn't L-I-K-A-B even notice that. L-I-K-A-B and L-I-K-E-A-B. But Ooh, which one is it? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently I don't know. <laughs> I Me try both. And so sometimes I'll see in a little thing, but I'm already, I've already exported it and I'm already like done. Oh. The computer's closed. It's yep. on my phone. Cause that's a whole process too, getting it to be. And yep. I'm like, eh, it, it doesn't matter. But I'm, 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 I'm a, the same type of grammar person as you. So those things. Well, I like, think that's probably just our yeah, education. It like is. You, you took that, did you take news? It was called news writing at tech. And yeah. news writing is like AP style, yeah. like all that oh, stuff. Yeah. And so I worked at like when people station. say it's our first annual, I'm like, there is no such thing as first annual. It's yes. inaugural. There right. is no first annual. Right. It is inaugural. Because it doesn't become annual until you, until do, your you first. do it the second time. Yes. My, my most hated is peak and peak. A sneak peak when they uh, spell it like a fucking mountain. Oh, yeah. Let's sneak peek. I'm like a sneak peek. You mean peek? Peek? P e e k. It's not p e. There's so many of them. That one drives me insane because people say sneak peek a yeah. lot and spell it like a mountain. And half staff and half mast. <laughs> like that shit is not on a ship. Like that flag is not on a ship. It right. is not half mast. It is right. half staff. Right. Damn it! Like it's funny. We should start making a shit list. together. Right. Everybody, get your shit First together. annual is my, that's the worst. Yeah, that's it's your the worst. Fir- my there is sneak no peek. such thing as first annual. It's inaugural. Like It makes me like, crazy. Cool, you have intentions to keep this going, but yeah. this is still <laughs> right. your first one. Right. And then the overuse of the, what do you even call it? What? The, it's not a quotes, comma. Apostrophe? Yes, apostrophe. <laughs> when people are like, I was like, oh, we're going to have the star box. So, ah, I just revealed. There's right. no possess it. There's no apostrophe. It's just not a name. Plural. And mine and you have Jones and I have Dobbs. So we have to deal with that. Like in writing and doing Christmas cards and stuff. Jones I, is. Or sorry, in Forbes. Forbes both of is. my last names. Forbes is. Jones is. There was a while I was like Forbes apostrophe. So you know what I started doing? I just do family. 
the the Jones. I, well, but I, I started doing that too. Technically, the I'm Forbes but family. technically I'm McCoy. So we still, yeah. But I I see what you're saying. Okay, well, we've gotten we gosh, we went off completely sidetracked. We went off. Okay, we, we what's got on your feet? We got you started talking. You started one. talking nerdy to I, me. I, <laughs> did you really do that? Yeah. Did you just say you started to you started talking nerdy <laughs> to me? Yeah. You did. Did you have you been? Like I'm holding full, that in your back I'm, pocket, no, like just, it just, it Emily, just came. To welcome you? to me. Oh. <laughs> welcome <laughs> to the wit that is Julie Dobbs. This is how I roll. Talk nerdy to me. <laughs> Have another glass of wine and tell me what's on your feed. I don't need another glass of wine, but just, I never do. This is only our second glass. <laughs> I get it. Okay. Uh, okay. Are you okay? Now I'm starting to sweat. What's okay. on my feet? So, what's on your feet? I mentioned. Um, the Dallas Stars had a little break and it was like, it was like everything in the world was working against us when we were trying yeah. to go somewhere like a while back, it was supposed to be a two week break and we were going to go to Cabo and we were going to go with Kelly's brother for his 40th birthday. The timing was perfect. COVID got bad again and they were worried about the borders, Canada, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So they were like, we're out. And we were like, all right, well, what do we do? Maybe we'll still go. And then they changed the break from two weeks to one week, four days, oh, four days. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was short. Yeah. Super tiny. Um, and so we were like, all right, well maybe we still go to Cabo. We just do a quick trip because we have somewhere to stay that we wouldn't have to pay for. Um, but Julie's passport wasn't. Oh dear. Updated. It's, it's been shipped off. I've done all the things okay. and then now I'm waiting for it. So we couldn't go to Cabo and then we're like, well, maybe we'll go to Vegas. And then it was like, okay, mom, can you come here so we can go out of town and do this quick trip? She's like, yeah, I don't really want to come there. I was just there. I was like, well, mother. Right. Okay. Well then we'll go to Austin and leave the kids, maybe go to the ranch and do like a night or two in Fredericksburg, which is this really Fun. cute little like hill country town. Yes. Uh, well, when you looked at the weekend in Fed Fredericksburg, it was a million dollars and mm -hmm. in like, well, if we're going to spend $800 to stay two nights in Fredericksburg, I'd rather go to Vegas. And then we're right back where we started. Yeah. Long story short, it seemed like everything was working against us. So we decided Wednesday through Saturday or Sunday, let's just all go to Austin. Kelly and I will find like somewhere to stay in Austin, make a night of it. Uh, well then the freeze hit Oh my <laughs> and, gosh. and Anna started throwing up. Uh, Ryder was throwing up. We thought we were over it. Then Anna started throwing up the day we were supposed to leave. So we were like, okay, we can't bring a stomach bug kid through ice <laughs> to go to Austin just so we can have one night in a hotel. Right. So we wrote it all out. We wrote out the throw up. We wrote out the freeze. And then we were left with one, two days. But what we did is we woke up on Saturday morning and we drove to Austin. We brought the dog. It was our first road trip. Okay. Um, so we're in Austin. So back to my feed. Kelly and I had a staycation. It was one night in downtown Austin. Um, we stayed at this cute little hotel. Is that when y'all were riding the scooters and I sent the you an inappropriate message? The scooters are my what's on your feed. And I, yes. I sent you an inappropriate message. Yes. Was that, is the scooter? It was not about scooters. You, well, no, I know I just it wasn't was so about. happy that y'all were like out having fun and partying. <laughs> and I tried to give you some advice. No, it was good. It some was good marital advice. advice. It was okay, good. Good. Good, it was good, good advice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the scooters is what I want to talk about. Okay. Because the scooters were on my feed and the scooters are a thing that has been- Were you drinking and scooting? Emily. <laughs> oh, it's so dangerous. I ate shit. No, of course you did. You can't scoot you and can't. drink. I, I have never been on one of those scooters and I- didn't know that it was like a Magna it, scooter. It's, like I didn't know that it was like electric it, or whatever it is. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know that it like lit fire from the fucking wheels and no. just shot you forward. No. I didn't know. I thought I'm it was just a, happy. Your teeth are intact. And I like, thought you don't it was have any broken bones. I thought it was a scooter. It's, it's not. not. Have you scootered? I have, I scooter all the time when what? we go on the road. Yeah. When we go on the road, I scooter all the time. <laughs> Cause I don't want it. Like the, the bus times are like That's so really staggered. Funny, yeah. By the way, so the bus times are so staggered. So I'll like take, I'll wear my flip flops, put my heels in my bag and I'll just scoot. If there, if it's there, Seattle, I scoot. Did you have to practice? Well, oh wait, but, sorry. Seattle, you scoot. Seattle, Where else I've, you scoot? I've scooted in Houston. Uh, I scooted in Cleveland. Like I scoot a lot of places. Bragging montage. So, <laughs> hey now, where have you scooted? These are all the places I've this scooted. This bitch has in. scooted in Cleveland. Cleveland, <laughs> Seattle, Houston. Check me out now. I mean, yes, but you, I would never, I would never drink and scoot. I would never drink and scoot. Well, I had to drink to scoot. <laughs> That's an ex excellent point, And I understand. 
I didn't. I have no but desire did you to learn scoot your lesson until I had drank. Until you okay. It, that's it's dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous. It's really dangerous. Yeah. So my but okay. Now we have a scooter at our house. So my like, kids like have one a scooter. Of those? It's it doesn't go as fast. But then also we have one of those little mini mopeds. So like if maybe I've had a couple glasses of wine and I can't find Hattie, I'll get on that moped and my knees are all up like in my ears and I'm like scooting along and it can't hardly go like around the neighborhood because I wear away so much. So I'll be like, and I'll be like, anybody seen Hattie, Hattie, like I'm scooting around the neighborhood. And so many of my friends will be like, I really wanted to take a video of you, but I figured that would be disparaging. I'm like, don't you ever fucking take a video of me doing this? No, because I look like dumb, you know, like, send it to the mind. Like you desk. know, I'm dumb and dumber when yes. they're riding. The, it, that's what I look like. I'm this like <laughs> giant human on this tiny person Big scooter. Lady on uh, a little big, like, scooter. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So anyway, but yes, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. I'm I just had glad, no idea that you were a professional scooter. Listen, I'm just glad you're okay. As I mean, someone okay. who cares about you. Thank I'm you. Just glad you're, I feel like you're a parent right now. Like, but uh, did you learn your lesson? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't scoot and drink. Okay. So I sometimes go oh, like get so excited to have one night. Oh, honey. I, I'm, I'm with you. And like, I, feel I, you. I told you the buildup where we thought it was going to be this whole week in Mexico, blah, blah, blah. Turned into one night in Austin. Yeah. And so I was like, so you're all out. Oh, oh you're, you're going. Yeah. All but, okay. but I did keep under control. Like it wasn't, I mean, I was okay. <laughs> yeah. No like judgment. N- no, I know. But I was proud of myself cause I was, you know, a little bit hungover the next day, but it wasn't like it ruined my life for two days. The like, fact that you were happens. able to get on a scooter that night yes. is a, a testament. Right. On the way there, we did the, um, petty cab. Oh, cute. <laughs> and so that was fun. We went to dinner. Um, and then on the way back, we were going to cab or petty cab, but Kelly's like, let's just scooter. So I blame him. Yeah. It's and, totally his fault. And then I hopped on with him and I thought like, I wait, oh, double scooter. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> There's so many things wrong here. Two people, one scooter. Yeah. Oh my God. I thought that he would take care of me. Oh, we, he, he can't <laughs> not on a scooter. Not after you've been drinking. This is another thing. Like when I'm so used oh to being gosh. alone, whenever Kelly's with me, I'm like, I give up all responsibilities and I'm like, you, oh. I trusted him. I yeah, was like, same. And he said, hop on. I got you girl. So I did. And I hopped on and, and we made it like it. a foot and just like tumbled. I could show you a giant bruise on my left God, knee. I wish there would have been video a of little, this. I told him the same thing. I was like, God, I wish there was video. It was right in front of the convention center in downtown Austin. So I wouldn't be shocked if there is video somewhere. Um, but it was bad. But I was I was like, fine. I was with it enough to like say ow, but also just die laughing. Yeah. And we laughed about it. The next day I was like, my knee hurts. Like I have a bad oh. scooter injury. And we just laughed about it. And it was like, neither of us said though, we shouldn't scoot. That's why I'm like, this is an interesting take. Like yeah. neither of us were like, well, we should have never hopped on that scooter. Yeah. We oh, were no, just- y'all are like, look, can't wait to do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm out. Like, I'm, we're gonna nail this I will next not time. Drink and scoot. No. <laughs> well, now I know because I had I didn't know what I was dealing with. It's it's a phenomenon that I'd successfully avoided for like two years. Yeah. And then that moment in time, <laughs> I once I got a scooter it. stuck like on a drawbridge. Like <laughs> someone was trying to like help me. Like no, no, the drawbridge. Or, no, it was like I can't remember what town I was in. A drawbridge. There, the, there's like a, it kind of like San Antonio. It's like a river walk, okay. but this is like a drawbridge going over some sort of, I need to figure out what All town I can picture is a pirate ship with but, like a bridge. <laughs> it's not a pirate ship, but anyway. Yeah. But scooting is fun, but don't drink and scoot. <laughs> don't drink and scoot. Okay. We've got, we've no, got to get our, to so our guests. That's what was on my feed. I mean, Captain fucking America's here. Woo. Yes. Yes. Okay. We're about to get to him. And we're here's the deal. And we're going to get to him fast because we're going to, uh, TMG news desk is basically the MLB lockout continues. However, yeah. we had lunch with a very high ranking MLB official Ooh, this week. Look at you. Not really, but I mean, I had someone who's plugged in mm-hmm. and, um, I feel confident that we're close. Okay. Because now once we hit the point in time where pitchers and catchers should be reporting the, the sense of urgency kind of starts to sink in. So I am confident we will start the season on time. Oh, I think on that time. spring training will be condensed. Okay. And we'll go from there. I have no basis to back this up other than like people I've talked to who okay. think they know what's going on. So you on. don't want to bet like the leg thing? I'm not, no, no betting on the leg thing. Okay. And then the other story I wanted to pass along, Trevor Bauer is not going to be prosecuted, which that oh. was the whole 
he know, was bad. crazy thing. He did bad. Things. He released a um, video that I want to table for another day okay. to talk about, about, you know, um, people jumping to conclusions. I, I'm not, I, I have not, you don't I've have watched the video. And so, th but there's a lot to unpack, like okay. in the day and age that we're living in and yeah. that like, you're so vulnerable as a professional athlete. Um, but then at the same time, if you're a woman, you also need to feel like you have a voice and you don't, you won't be silenced, right. all this kind of stuff. But We'll talk about that next week. Do you, you want the news desk again next week? New, yes. Can I please? You can hold on. Can to the I news please desk. have the news desk? I next will week. give you the desk. And, but in the meantime, if you're listening to this and going to listen next week, or even if you're not, go Google that uh, Trevor Bowers statement because he said it. He it was him speaking like in a weight room or something. So anyway, interesting. And I would, yeah. I definitely <clears throat> want to delve into yeah. that. Let's do it because it's a lot are. of relevant topics. A lot of relevant topics. Okay, topics. Somebody so, brought us our special guest. Somebody brought us our special guest. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. So first, what I want you to do is I want you to take out the elote. Elote? Is that how you say it? Elote. Okay. So we've talked about Yokiero a million times on the show. They're a huge supporter of us, a huge sponsor. Their stuff is so incredibly so good. So amazing. The queso is so legit. Handy. The guacamole is legit. Yeah. They have the little individual packs. Um, everything is so good. And now they came out with this el elote. Dip, which is corn dip, which is yeah. basically corn dip. And y'all, it is so good. And ju I, I am unfortunately not able to have some right now. Cause I'm about to tell you a little bit more about Yokiero, but I'm telling you, we opened this up and it is so freaking good. Little bit of spice, not too much. Yeah. Not much. At um, all. but it also too, like I love queso and I love, you know, I, th I feel like this kind of is a little healthier mm -hmm. version. Like if you don't want to, oh, yeah. you know, you're like, Oh, I'll just have you mix in like, Hey, I'll have a little bit of queso here and then a little bit of elote here. Mm -hmm. A little bit of guacamole, a little bit of hot sauce. Because mm -hmm. if it's I could, natural. I would just drink queso. Like I would just be like, F all those other sauces, Same. dips. I, I'm just, give me a queso IV. Mm -hmm. So I try to like mix it up so where I'm not just like so heavy on the queso. Mm -hmm. So anyway, elote mixes that up. We're so thankful to Yokiero and their support. Technically of, corn can be know, vegetables. Game. Corn, it, I mean, totally getting my veggies. Mm -hmm. um, and the guacamole is made of 100% Haas avocados. There's no artificial ingredients in this stuff. It's all hand scooped, made in small batches. Huge fan of that. Um, it's a Texas based company, which we of course always love. Um, you know, always ripe, always ready, always, you know, really, I mean, it's easy. ready. It's easy. I mean, and what's coming up, the extraordinary sporting event on Sunday. Yep. Everybody needs need. some of this. Go get it. And use Bottle Rover and get your booze. There you go. We've got you all set. We've got you all set. Bottle Rover, get Noble Vines, go to the store, get Yokiero. Mm -hmm. Elote, queso, guacamole, hot sauce. It's all there. And um, we ready? To, We're ready. to pass to our guest, we're talking about football. We're talking about the Super Bowl. We already kind of revealed. We kind of gave. We, Emily, if you've been paying attention, Emily kind of mumbled I spilled it. the beans. We gave a couple good hints on social media, and I think we have today had some winners in our contest Ooh. of guess the guest. But it is for the 100th episode. The mom game delivers the one, the only Roger Staubach and his beautiful wife Marianne. Here they are. We are so, so, so excited to welcome Marianne and Roger Staubach to the mom game. I, I know you guys are huge listeners of the show. You've been begging to come on for quite some time. So we finally actually Roger. Thank you. I never miss it. Here on, our, here on our 100th episode to have you guys in studio with us is Seriously, so fun. Thank you guys for being here. We so appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. And I usually start off when we have guests, you know, to kind of break the ice a little bit by telling stories about how, you know, either Julie met you or how I met you. And I will never forget, and I'm sure Rob Roger remembers this like it was yesterday. It was a children's cancer fund lunch, and he and Troy Aikman were the honorary chairs, and we were lining up backstage to walk with the, uh, the cancer patients who were models that day, which is a wonderful event, by the way. And, um... I, I was walk I was up in front or maybe I think I can't remember if I was in front or behind and I I heard this man say hi Emily and I turned around and I was like 
oh my god Roger Stavok knows my name like, <laughs> I totally I was trying not to freak out but was, you know you were so nice and so gracious and so kind I remember getting in the um in the car when that was over and I called my dad I was like you are never gonna believe who knows my name and he was like who and I was like Roger Staubach and he was like get the out of here and I was like I know it's so crazy so anyway it was uh I'm sure you remember that story I'll never really forget. well <laughs> never forget it how did you know Emily watch a lot of baseball I'm guessing just seeing her around all of oh, that yes and the uh of course I, we we God, I should have had the, the date it's it's coming up in a few weeks actually or the Children's Cancer Fund again. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, we can post that on our social yeah. media. I think it's yeah. April 20th. Yeah. Oh, I won't say. April something. Yeah. You know, it's coming it's, up. It's coming yeah. up. And I, I wish I had my calendar because it's, we got two events uh, associated with it. Yeah. So, it's such a great, such yeah. a great event for they've sure. Done, they've done a really good job with that. And yeah. The, you know, the kids are, you know, it's, uh, oh, it's sad. Yeah. yeah. I know. Well, but. It, when Roger first started, which was what thirty years ago, but it ago. becomes good. It yeah. starts out. Sad, and they would can... do a video of the children who had died in that year, mm -hmm. and it would be like twelve and fifteen children. By the time that the luncheon was over, you were just a puddle. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And now, the last couple of years, there have been no children that have died that have been in their treatment. Right. So the treatment has progressed so much. It really yeah. has. Yeah. Well, I know that. What you guys have done has done a lot for that. I was funny well, story. We haven't. <laughs> well, we're, raising we're, all the money. Well, well the, yes, that part of it. Yeah, for sure. The, the doctors have been fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, um, I was actually in one of those programs as well. <laughs> but you didn't know my name, and you didn't say hi. <laughs> <Not Julie. laughs> <laughs> but now here we are getting to meet each other, so this is lovely. And the next time he sees you, he will say hi. There you Julie. go. And that's fine. You, you meet a lot of people. I um, mean, you yeah. can't be expected to know everybody. But yeah, I got to walk one of the girls yeah. um, down the runway yeah. one time, and we ended up hanging out the whole night. It was back when I was doing reporting for the Dallas Stars, so that's how they kind of found me to help with it. But it was just a really wonderful event. Yeah. And um, those kids' personalities are so yeah. amazing. Oh, you know, yeah. it's, when you get older, names become a a bit uh, di difficult. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I'm here with uh, Barbara. <laughs> and, I mean, Marianne. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, really. Yeah, Barbara's it, lovely. It does. You know, it, it, I've, I've really, I really tried to always remember names, and it, it really is, it's a little harder now. As you, as you well, I think part there. of it is because you, that, yeah, well, it's, you, you know, know so many people. Yeah. Oh, my you goodness. Know. I can't imagine. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So let's talk about okay. you guys, your marriage. Um, you've been together for a little while, <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah. Been married since 1965. Yes, five children, four daughters, one son. son? That's right. Um, how did you guys meet? Was it love at first sight? Did he sweep uh, you off your feet? How did this go down? Hardly in the fourth grade. <laughs> fourth grade. <laughs> We went to the same uh, Catholic elementary school from okay. first grade to eighth grade, but we weren't in the same classroom until fourth grade. So, and you know, I, I, I knew didn't like who girls to the eighth grade either. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, it, really, back then, oh, yeah. you know, I was just. It was into sports boys back and girls, then, and, and by the eighth grade, we we actually went out on. You know how you go parties. with uh -huh. go with high. someone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Will you go with me? Yeah. Did he ask you to go where, with him? Where, where yeah. do you go? I don't know where. But <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to go somewhere, it would be with him, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then we dated all, off and on all through high school and college. Okay. Um, he went to uh, Purcell, which was the all boys Catholic high school. I went to Mount Notre Dame, the all girls Catholic high school. But we lived about a half a mile apart. Okay. So, uh huh. And. Uh, so, you know, in grade school, he'd ride his bike over. But, yeah. So cute. So well, we go. Yeah. Marianne was a nurse. And well, then I went to, when he went to the Naval school. Academy, I went to and, nursing school. And then I find out I'm at the Naval Academy, and I find out she's dating a doctor. Oh. Know. Well, we broke but, up and but, dated other yeah, people. Yeah, okay. we, yeah so yeah. We, we, you know, we kind of didn't. We dated uh, most of the time, but right. we did break up. And it, it, But she was, you know, with some doctor, and. That was in 1963, and uh, then I won the Heisman Trophy, and she uh, she immediately called me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, That'll help. 
And yeah. She, she came back. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> that doctor had nothing on you no, and the uh, Heisman at that point. Come do- on. The doctor was a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, tip to all the dudes out there. If you want to get a girl back, just win a Heisman trophy. It's yeah. pretty much that simple. Yeah. <laughs> just so, an easy well, task. coincidence then. Because so, we, we started dating again. Yeah. Right? Oh, total, yeah. total coincidence. So what was what were those times like? The dating time when he was at the Naval Academy and then... You know, you know, at that point, you probably could have gotten out of service time, couldn't you have? Well, I'm, yeah, I could have. But you right. didn't he would want never right. do that. No, Ex- no, right. No. So it ha- take me through those years of like, you know, like you said, you two reconnecting and then you going off to the Navy, and your service time, and how did all that work it all out logistically? As a well, when we were, when I was in nursing school in Cincinnati, and of course he was in Annapolis. It, it, we would do like weekends. I went to homecoming, Army Navy game, June week, and there were a couple other girls in Cincinnati who dated guys. And we would basically drive all night from Cincinnati to Annapolis, uh, then party all weekend and drive home Sunday night and be back in class on Monday morning. Oh wow, it's like the life! Right. Sounds and like yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. It was, <laughs> and. Um, you know, so we dated like that. And then, of course, when, then we you cannot be married while you're at the Naval Academy. Okay. I didn't know that. Is that still the case? Yes. It okay. still is. Yeah. Wow. And so he graduated in June. And what I just looked at that picture because I was doing this book for our granddaughter. I think your graduation was like June 11th. We got engaged June 21st, and we got married September 5th. Now, you never could do, plan a wedding that quick. No, today. no, no, no. You won't even get your dress. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you were ready. Yeah. No. So, and then then we had four years in the Navy. Okay. And did you go with him everywhere? Everywhere except for Vietnam. Right. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that probably wouldn't be yeah. an we, option. At first, we were stationed at the Naval Academy. He, they kept Letterman uh, back to coach the freshman team, the okay. plebe team. So we were there for the first three months, which was ideal. Like we lived in this little carriage house behind a main house in downtown Annapolis. You could walk everywhere, and he had an easy job. What you went to work like at ten or something, and you know it was just perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we went to Athens, Georgia, for supply school, and that's where Jennifer was born. Okay. And then when she was six weeks old, he left for Vietnam for a year. Yeah, I was partially color- colorblind, and. Uh... I ended up going into uh, supply school, which really uh, turned out good. I mean, I learned a lot, and uh, you know, I, s- I spent a year. In, uh, and when I went to Vietnam, I was in Da Nang and Chu Lai, and I was supporting the, uh, the Marines. Uh, in fact, so, some of my uh, teammates were uh, um, the SEALs were pretty new at that time. Yeah. But the, they had UDT of the SEALs, and so I was in uh, Camp Tinshaw. I, you know, I was living there in. Uh, with all the guys that were uh, the SEALs and everybody, the, the Green Beret people that were there. And so the um, my teammates, though, were s- some SEALs. And they uh, I, I, I went into, when they first got in there, a couple of them, uh, um, Larry said to me, uh, or I, you know, I said to Larry, I said, hey, wh- what did you guys do? You've been, been gone a couple of days. And he said, you know, Roger, uh, you were our quarterback, and we uh, really – admired you or our leader as a quarterback, but uh, uh, we can't tell you what we did. <laughs> but Really? But we are doing a heck of a lot more than what you're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> it made me really feel good. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> so, no, yeah, that, what, what, did they, did everyone, I mean, obviously you said some of your, some of those guys were your teammates, oh, so yeah, they knew, uh-huh. but like. They were pilots, it, but were SEALs. Yeah, at that point in time, you know, because the media is not as prevalent, you know, social media is definitely yeah. not around. Did, you know, did random guys that you had never met, were they aware, you know, oh, this is, I just, well, you just won a Heisman not too long ago. Well, yes. Well, they, they, they knew, you know, the Naval Academy, the football team, you know, most of the people there, you know, were, where they were <laughs> Navy people followed the team and everything. Right. And, but we, 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 li- you know, we lived uh, uh, with everybody. We lived at Camp Tinshaw was uh, a, a big camp, you know, we just, uh, you had, Bunks, bunks and everything in there and it was uh but you know the ones that went out you know and got you know out it's really i mean i i get get uh, upset about uh how how many of our classmates we lost uh, or just people we lost in in vietnam and, and you look back and uh, uh it's 
it was a very difficult war and very, uh, at, the, at the time it was, uh, you know, a lot of people did not like the fact that we should be in Vietnam. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. but, but the troops are there and they do their job and I, I think people recognize that from the, you know, fr- from, you know, and, and, you know, really honored the troops. Yeah. But it, it was, it, it, I mean, it was, I mean, a tough war. I mean, every war is tough. I mean, it's, but Vietnam was a difficult one. And, uh, Imagine. Yeah. So. Why was that, at that point in your life, you know, you have your relationship, you have a, a few, a very wonderful future ahead of you in football at that point. Why was it so important for you to serve your country? Why was that something that was just not even up for debate at that point? Well, when I graduated from Navy, uh, I mean, I could have, you know, if something could have, you know, say, you know, I, I want to leave or something, but it, then you, you might go in the reserves. Uh, but I, you know, I wanted to go in the Navy with uh, uh, with my classmates, and we had pilots, we had everybody in, in all different uh, mm-hmm. functions in the in the service. And there's no way in the world that I, I would have uh, wanted, to, you know, would have left uh, and try to get out of my service and uh, go play pro football. That would have been. Uh, it would have been. I could not, not your I, character. I, I, I just yeah. was about to say. It. <laughs> no. I've been so, married to him for six years, but that, that's just but, but, about but what I was about four, to say. But and that's phenomenal years, just yeah. to hear that because yeah. I don't, I, yeah. I don't know that people still think that way. You know, yeah. a lot of these, whether it's a young athlete or somebody that has some way to immediately go uh, make a bunch of money, right, or yeah. go right. hop into the, a career they've been dreaming about. So, just right there, and I and I think it's a theme that we'll talk about, and that's followed you yeah. throughout your whole life. Is is like you sticking to your character. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I, I got a chance to to play, and I, I was 27 when I joined the Cowboys. And, uh, and, and what happened there, too, it was uh, Don Meredith was really – was built Dallas to have, uh, starting to be a really a good football team. Coach Landry was uh, there, and, and, uh, and you know, Don uh, retired. Uh, uh, and all of a sudden I realized – I get a chance to play now, and mm-hmm. so Craig Morton and I were—I uh, was the backup quarterback to Craig right away. But I think if Don would have stayed there and Craig, I would not—I would have been traded somewhere else. And uh, I always think of that because I am, you know, our, our families—we've loved Dallas, mm-hmm. and uh, glad we made it to Dallas. We're all glad that, that <laughs> it didn't worked happen. out just yeah. Yeah. how it yeah. should have. Yeah. Yeah. So, Marianne, when he's in Vietnam. Yeah. And you're at home as, as just one child at yeah, this right. time. Jennifer was just six weeks old. And so, us. what did what was this? What was that like for you to be well, you know doing this all on your own, especially for the first time? Well, fortunately, I went back to Cincinnati and I lived with my parents. And I still had three younger siblings that were still at home. So I was in golf, really, in a lot of family. And Roger's parents lived maybe three miles away. So Jennifer and I, we went over there every Wednesday night for dinner to spend time with them. And then, obviously, we saw them other times. So, And I went back to work part-time at the hospital where I had worked before we got married because my parent, my mom could take care of, you know, I had someone there sure. to take care of Jennifer. And uh, it would have been oh, really impossible without family support. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you know. so when he when he comes back and the, the, the whole Cowboys thing happens and everything kind well, of... Well, we still had two years in the Navy. Okay. We didn't, when he came back... So from, back from Vietnam, two years. Then we went to Pensacola, Florida okay. for two yeah. years. Still okay. not over. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Still, still serving that time. And then how many children did y'all have when the well, football we career started? Well, we had two started? more born in Pensacola. Okay. So when we came to Dallas, we had a two-month-old, a 15-month-old, and a three-year-old. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, gosh. And, and Roger... And you're moving away from all yeah, the family. Yeah, exactly. We had nobody. And Roger had... You know, he had left... When he did leave from the Navy, he would go to training camp those two years when we were in Pensacola, and he went to a quarterback school. And, and so everybody said to him, oh, you have to buy a house in Richardson, Texas, because they have the best school system. And Roger said, we need to do that because if I get traded, we need to be able to sell the house. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at these three little girls thinking (laughs) they won't even get old enough to ever go to school. (laughs) You know, it was like get up in the morning, feed and bathe and diaper, and you go to bed at night and you feed and bathe. Uh You know, it was just constant. Mm -hmm. But the house we bought was great, and it was two blocks and across the creek from the elementary school. And we stayed there nine years, so the girls did start school there. Right. Did y'all intend to, like, did you 
want to have a lot of kids. Yeah. Because, like, I have two, and I almost lose my marbles <laughs> pretty much on a daily basis. Like, I always tell people I'm not emotionally capable or, of having more than two children because I think I would lose my mind. Um, but it, that's that was something you guys... Well, one. and I'm one of five. I'm the okay. oldest of five. Okay. I'm an only so, child. So, so okay. it's kind of a shock. I was just about to say, what, is, <laughs> <laughs> what was that like for you? It, well, it was good. I, my parents were, uh, they both worked and uh, they they were just great people. And they, they neither one of them went to college. Uh, so they, they were just good parents. And uh, I, so I was... They, I kept, I, I really wanted, to, uh, down the street where, where the, was the Bean family, and there was nine beans there. Whoa. And I used to, yeah. I used to hang out there all the time. And so I, you were like and the 10th Bean. And I, I, kept yeah. telling my, I kept telling my parents, I, I, I'd like to get a brother or sister, you know, what, what's, and they said, well, we're, you know, we're, we're working on it, but uh, they, uh, my dad uh, uh, had some, some issues that uh, prevented him, uh, prevented them from having a another child actually so what was roger like as a as, as a, a dad of like babies uh he you know, was really good and i have to this is the honest <laughs> okay truth. okay mm-hmm. once <laughs> i quit nursing a baby at night once they yep. you know he got up with them all the time i oh, never awesome. got up again first of all he, he's a very light sleeper from vietnam he always said it was from being in vietnam makes sense so he would hear them way before i did and uh-huh. i figured why should two of us be awake? <laughs> sure. Why yeah. not? So he, It's the opposite of my husband. that just right. never can hear anything for whatever reason. It never wakes him up when the no, kids are Roger calling. Roger was great. And he he got up. If somebody was sick, he'd write, you know, I gave him Tylenol at 2 o'clock or yeah. whatever. So he was a really, he was a good baby dad and a good child, you know, yeah. father. Yeah, I, w- I wanted more children. I mean, I, I, <laughs> he was good at diapering, doing everything. Yeah. But that seems, it, it doesn't seem to fit, like, especially being an only child. Like, did you just, was that just instinctual, just something that you wanted to do? Because I feel like, you know, fair or not, like, mothers, a lot of things get deferred to the, to the mom. And I think a lot of those things, you know, growing up, you pay attention to things and you have your baby dolls yeah. and you want to do all this. But, like, where did that come from in you? Well, I just, um, yeah. I, I enjoyed spending my time with the Bean family. <laughs> <laughs> and the Bean, you, you learned a lot. You there, learned a lot from the Bean. There was nine of them down there, and they all they all seemed like they liked uh. each other, and and so I, I you know, we we really, uh, Mary, we 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 did have a uh, we, we lost a, a stillborn and a miscarriage, and then we then uh, the Marianne, it was difficult, and uh, oh, for but, both but of we, us, yeah. we ended up. Uh, then we had having two more uh, great Jeff and Amy. Jeff and Amy. So there's five years between Stephanie, the youngest of the first three, yeah. and then Jeff. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it was kind of like two families in a way. Yeah, but it, see, it, I mean, that I always had look at families with a lot of kids, and it does look like so much fun, but, but it's chaos. Chaos, but <laughs> so, you just have to accept it, right? Yeah. yeah. So much chaos. Yeah. So you had been obviously kind of used to being alone when he was off in Vietnam. Um, and then you're in Dallas, and all of a sudden, he becomes a Dallas Cowboy, the quarterback yeah. of the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. And here you are with all of these little kids. Uh, how did that whole process go for you? What were the challenges like? Did you bring them all to games? How often were, did you get to see them and, and talk to them and be with them? What was all of that like for you? It's well, for a busy the, time. It, it was busy, but we didn't take them to games. Um, back then, the cowboy, the player got two tickets to every game, and your tickets were, you know, next to whoever was drafted when you were, mm-hmm. and you were, you started low, and then you kind of snaked up by years, you mm-hmm. know, so you only had two tickets. Okay. So. They didn't have a choice. Yeah, yeah. But, right. Yeah. And um, <laughs> plus, you really they didn't pay me enough to buy more tickets. <laughs> Yeah, well, you were just telling us your first your uh, first contract. It, 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 my first contract was uh, less than forty million. It was twenty five thousand. Just <laughs> slightly less. A little bit less. You and Dak very the comparable. Old, the, yeah, the Dacker. Is, but but it, it's changed. I mean, in the seventies, it started changing late because of TV and everything. Yeah. So the contracts got they they did continue to go up. 
But my, my third third year, it, it, you know, uh, I started and uh, it, it won the Super Bowl. It improved somewhat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. somewhat. Yeah. No big deal, yeah. relatively speaking. But you know what? When he signed that contract, that was more money than we were making in yeah. the Navy. We bought a house in Richardson that was bigger than either of the houses we had grown up in. I mean, we were perfectly happy. Forty-five uh-huh. nine we, was that house. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. and I, I found it. And this is another funny story. And he, you know, obviously Roger looked at it and everything. We liked it, and but we were him in the hall, and he's like, "Oh, you know, I'm only a rookie, forty-five <laughs> nine. So I get a call one day from the builder, and they say it was a spec home, uh-huh. and that they have someone else that wants to buy it, and if we don't make a decision, he's going to sell it. So Roger's at the cowboy office in a meeting, so I call down there and tell the secretary I need to talk to him. And so <laughs> they go in to get him, and he and he said, well, just tell her I'll call her back. And they, the lady says, well, Roger, she's crying. Oh. <laughs> so now he thinks, you know, something, something's happened. Yeah. And, he's, and he goes, oh, just tell him we'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant <laughs> ploy. That is amazing. That is, yes, that's good work right there. Yeah. That's a stealth move. She's crying. Yeah. yeah that's so we got that's the house good. on Prairie there Creek. So, when all of this is happening, I mean, you knew, you, I mean, you won the Heisman Trophy. You knew you had talent. Uh, did you ever imagine, and, and you being kind of along for this entire ride, right? Did you imagine it would ever become this? Like, you're. You're freaking Captain America, dude. Like, <laughs> what? I well, mean, <laughs> well, you, you know, you, you just you, you never know in life where yeah. things go. And I, I but I, I believed that I, you know, I, I really worked, worked, worked out hard. And I, I, I worked also in the off season, and and even uh, I, I didn't do, obviously during the season, but I would work out every day, even in the off season. And I had a job. I, I went to work for the Henry S. Miller Company because we. Uh, and, and during the season, obviously, I was not. Uh, go, I didn't go down to the, the the office, but in the off season, I did. But then I, I worked out, and 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 I really believed. Um, as much as I worked out, I, I had confidence in myself, and I knew that if I get a, get a chance, and and it, it was ironic. They had a very fine quarterback in Don Meredith, and and, and Craig, Craig got banged up a little bit. Craig Morton was a fine quarterback, also. I, I you know I'm, I was there with. Uh, and Danny White was with me, and he was outstanding. So there, there were some really, uh, you know, good quarterbacks. That uh, and and um, but but my in those early years, I I, I just I just wor- worked real hard, and uh, it it just turned out that Don Merrith retires, and uh, I get a chance to to play and, and with the Dallas Cowboys. I was drafted by Kansas City, also. They were they were late drafts. I was still in the Navy. Back then, there was two leagues. Oh, that's right. And, and they yeah. so Kansas City had drafted me, and uh, and then Dallas, and uh, and I, you know, I, Gil Brandt, uh, I signed up with Gil, the Cowboys, and it it, it it's you know it's turned out to be a, a great decision. And yeah. At the time, I I was just, and I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Did it ever become too much? Like, mm-hmm. oh, this is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is a no, lot. Sometimes it did, but you know. There wasn't the social media. There wasn't the 24-hour sports station. Yep. That, you know, so... There's I a mean, little of that. Yeah, yeah, but nothing like today. <laughs> I mean, today's world, you can't go anywhere. And we lived in this great little neighborhood. And, you know, when we won the Super Bowl, our neighbors came and all decorated our house outside and everything. You know, so it was, you know, it, it was fine. I mean, we... We still now look back at our whole life and say, oh, my gosh, can you believe the life we have lived? Mm -hmm. You know. Wow. But it comes in little increments. Yeah, for sure. Roger, Uh, what do you, uh, when you think back to your career, like, what do you miss the most about playing football? Well, the yeah, what I miss the most is really right out there on the field, just Mm -hmm. just competing and, uh, you know, as an athlete – I really, uh, I was nervous before the game, and but I once I got out there, I was, uh, I mean, I, I was excited. I mean, I was really into it, and and so I, I, I just I missed that that feeling, uh, mm-hmm. that, that competitive <laughs> feeling that I had, and uh, and we we had a great team. We had a great coach. Coach Landry was a great person and a, and a, and a heck of a coach, and 
we had and I can't start mentioning players we 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 just had some uh, real we had like two different teams we had the uh, the team that uh with Bob Lilly and um Mel Renfro and Cornell Green and Leroy and and, and Bob Hayes and and uh and we had that Super Bowl and then we had like a almost a whole different team when we won a second Super Bowl with uh when we got you know Tony Dorsett and yeah Kath, and we, we had Calvin Hill and the other you had a lot of weapons team. all the time so, so <laughs> well it was it was kind of we kind of had two different uh and I I really felt great about that because I was a quarterback on almost like two different teams right and we won two Super Bowls. We we had some tough losses to to the Steelers, but we were always uh, t- during the seventies. We were uh, uh, real competitive, and we mm-hmm. we uh, we uh, were in four. We we were one, you know one right the four of them, but we uh, also were we 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 only had one year we weren't in the playoffs in the seventies. And so, that's the year Jeff was born on December 28th, so that made up for <laughs> them. To, uh, <laughs> good timing on yeah. that one. Yeah. Um, and then you decide when you did decide to retire, um, it, probably not prematurely, but you still had gas left in the tank. It, it appeared from what you know what it, what yeah. people say. Um, did you feel that way? But the concussions were just well, too I, much. I I, I I felt you know I felt good, but. There was a lot of concussions, and I, I went to uh, I, went, I went up to a to a, a hospital up in New York that they had that they it was a, a brain a doctor a uh, neurologist neurologist yeah. and he uh, was really into it on concussions and uh, and and he he told me and he he he, he did everything with you know, gave me all the all the I guess uh, X rays yeah. and MRIs yeah. And he and he just said, uh, you, you know, you Roger, you're all right now, but you've had too many of them. And I was going on 38 years old, and he said, you need to retire. He said, I, I'm going to put it down, but I I, I still was going to still go back and play two more years, and uh, is what I wanted to do. And and, and it really, it, it, it turned out though that it, it was best. Everybody pretty much said it was best that. Uh, well, and he also said, you don't know if the next one yeah. could have really yeah. dire effects. But the, but the other thing is we had uh, we, we had a great quarterback. Danny White was a heck of a quarterback, and uh, he was with me four years, and uh, he was ready to go, and he took over and did great. Yeah. It's interesting because I was just seeing – I just saw a headline the other day uh, from Dirk and how he – fought through his ankle injury the last two years of his career. And he, he did this interview just recently that was saying, I don't know if that was the right thing to do because I'm struggling every day with my ankle when it comes to my kids and my family and trying to live my post career life. So it's interesting to hear you say that. And I imagine that's just a really tough decision for a lot of athletes. Cause like you said, it's the adrenaline, it's the fire, it's what you dream about. And here it is, but you have to hang them up at some point. Um, so it's just an interesting conversation, I think. And yeah. at that point, you had to have felt like, okay, I've done a lot here. <laughs> yeah. Is there one thing that like sticks out, whether it's you know being known as Captain America or the Hail Mary or it, the Super Bowl? Is there one thing? I mean, we always ask people this, and I always people ask me this sometimes too about what's what's your, the favorite moment in your career. And so I'm asking you that question, knowing full well that sometimes you're like, this is a dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, you know the, uh, the 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 Cowboys. I really feel uh, be, became very very popular uh, before I before I got there. They started, and I and I think it was Coach Landry that really got the America's team and everything, because he would stand on the sidelines there. He had that hat on, mm-hmm. and there's just something like about that. him. And 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 he started out <laughs> with a rough rough beginning, and then started to build a great team but, but but you know all of a sudden the Cowboys be, became a real popular football team and I think it goes right to coach Landry and then we uh we were winning in the 70s uh and you know unfortunately I wish we would have won more Super Bowls um Troy won won three and he tells me that all uh-huh. the time I'm sure he reminds you <laughs> I'm sure he does but he's he's, he's another great one yeah I mean, he's, and he defers to you like all the time <laughs> like, all the time like he if uh, anyone tries to talk about how great Troy is he's always like Roger's better Roger's the best uh, I, I give it to Troy yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. somebody's but, got to but, but so it, it was uh you know coach Landry uh, was I, I think really developed that and and so the Cowboys uh uh even even today, they they it's been a little while since we've been in a 
in a Super Bowl. We're, but we're <laughs> just a little. In a minute. <laughs> we're, we're, st we're still a very popular team. Yeah. yeah. That was my next question is like, how tuned in are you to the Cowboys, to the NFL, to, to football since your playing days and now as a busy grandparent too, which we'll get to. Well, I sure don't hang around with the players or anything. I mean, I, but even watch I, it. We watch I, I, it all the time. I watch it all the time. I'm, I mean, I'm just still a Cowboy fan. You know, yeah. definitely a Cowboy fan. And we we grew up in Cincinnati, Marianne and I both. And, so now we're like, and, and, uh, and they were asking if Dallas was playing Cincinnati and Super Bowl. And I said, well, I'd have to go, I have to go for Dallas. And uh, But now I'm going for yeah. the Bengals. Now you can, uh, yeah. I could pull for the Bengals. So, so it, it's um, – uh, all the all the years go by, and it, it's uh, you, you still uh, reminisce. Uh, and football's really my life, and I I do have another life. But yeah. but but it, to to people uh, who are really nice to you, or it's it's football. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, one quick question about while we're on the topic of Cincinnati, I have to get your thoughts on Joe Burrow. <laughs> what do you think of him as a quarterback, and and what are you expecting? I guess out of the Super Bowl. Well, I'm, I'm <laughs> you know. For quarterbacks, uh, you know Stafford is a heck of a quarterback too. He was uh, there's a real nice article about him in the paper uh, when he was at Highland Park. Mm -hmm. and all. He, he was a heck of a football player and a quarterback, and he got to, he went with Detroit. It, you know, it takes a team effort, and, right? But he's uh, he's a leader, and he's you know he's with the Rams and now. He's uh, so I, I it's uh, I, I really love watching the quarterbacks and hearing hearing about the quarterbacks. And, uh huh. And Stafford is. Uh, is really a, a a good one for the Rams, and uh -huh. and, and and uh, Burrow is uh, is also an excellent quarterback. Yeah, he is really good, and uh, he's I think he's made a difference in Cincinnati getting to the Super Bowl too. So, for sure. So it's it's kind of going to be a quarterback battle, and yeah. uh, uh, between the two of them should be good because they're both really good quarterbacks. Yeah. And one more on that subject. So when you talk about the advent of this, you know, new quarterback, the Lamar Jacksons, the, you know, Dak to an extent, Pat Mahomes, like, you know, the 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 guys who have a cannon for an arm but also have the ability to scramble. Uh -huh. You feel like hey, I started that. <laughs> Remember me? <laughs> uh, no, I it's I did run a lot and yeah. and, 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 it, and it was not uh, you know, coach Lannery uh we, we were watching film uh, like my I was there 11 years, and by, I think almost the 10th or 11th year, he'd watch the film. He said, you know, Stavok, you're running too much. You're going to learn someday. <laughs> and I said after the, that meeting, he, he said that, right? I said, hey, coach, you know, I've been here now. It's, uh, I think it was 10 years I, you know, when, he, when he said that. And, but he used to always complain about me running because, you know, you might get hurt. Right. And, and, and I did once. I mean, I separated my shoulder, which was not good. But but I, I other than that, I was uh, uh, I, I did run a lot back then, and you know, I'm I'm kind of proud of that because I'd get we we get those first downs, and uh, it, it comes in handy. And and so today, quarter, <laughs> quarterbacks can run and slide. Back then, you could slide if you wanted to, but they still could spear you. Yeah. And that's that's where the problem I had was getting the hit the helmet to the helmet when I would. You know, a lot of it was was running, but sometimes it was in the pocket. But they would hit. Uh, you know, today, you know, that's a rule that they have that you're not. You know, you can't spear the guy yeah. and, and hit, right. hit him with. Use your helmet as a weapon. And that's fairly. I mean, I it, say it's fairly a, recent, it's, it's but like since rule. I've been yeah. watching yeah. football, like I mean, yeah. you know, so it's it's something that's happened in the last. Well, I'm older than I thought I was when I just did the math, but <laughs> 20 years or so, 30 maybe, I don't know. Blank um, of an eye. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, when you look at, you know, you guys as parents and kind of, I guess, parenting kind of in, in the public spotlight, um, how do you feel like you navigated those waters, um, being a public figure and while also being a public figure who's a parent? We tried to make it as normal as possible for our kids and to make them really realize that they were not to expect anything different than any other child, you know, any favors or anything. They had to earn their own way. They had to be their own person. They had to work hard. Um, you know, we just tried to do what every parent would do, just, you know, mm -hmm. teach your child to be successful on their own mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, part of it, I think we were really fortunate that we had girls first. 
because by the time Jeff came along, Roger was almost ready to retire. I mean, he, and so they were in grade school, and I remember one story, a little boy said to Jennifer one day after a game, you know, on a Monday, oh, what about, blah, 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 you know, football? And she goes, oh, my dad doesn't talk to me about that. <laughs> and she could say that, but if that was the son who said that, Right. It would have been a whole different ballgame. Uh -huh. Yeah. Did they ever get annoyed by the attention, by the fact that they were the kids of Roger Sometimes. And, and sometimes they would prefer just to give their first name and yeah. not say their last name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do you, how, I mean, how do you, how do you handle that as a parent? You know, because, you know, you, you want them to have, you want them to be comfortable, right? But there's nothing you can do to change your, your job, job and your, you are, your notoriety. Yeah. But fortunately, the Cowboys were fairly successful in, all through the 70s. So most of the comments were always good and yeah. positive. That's good. You know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, there weren't a lot of games that they lost, you you know, and then the kid has to go back to school the next day. Yeah. Right. Can you imagine doing that now, though, no. with the social media and it, people yeah, are see? so venomous and so it, ugly to people? They can be like, so hateful. Oh, Trust me. Yeah, but there, there, there's yeah. good people out there, too. A ton there. of well, them, yeah. yes. Yeah, they're, they're really, I mean, sports is just, you know, it's something you, you know, I I, I enjoy it, because, and I see it, and, you know, I and I was a businessman for uh, with the Henry. A lot longer my, than a mm -hmm. football my player. My own company for many, many years, and and I, you know, I was I was into sports just like uh, people are today, and they're, and, and it's it's really, it, it makes you, you know, I think, you really enjoy, you know, having your team and, and rooting for them, and you, of course you want them to win. But 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 it's it's still it's it's part of your life. And mm -hmm. I think I th mo most people, you know, they you know they want you know autographs and this and that, and and uh, you know that's they you gotta look at yourself and say, golly, it's <laughs> I must be doing something. And so uh, you know, signing autographs. Well, I, I shouldn't say that on, but you, I, I you can cut well, that off. You're yeah. fine. Oh, yeah. I, I do sign them all the, yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, uh, so it's you, you, I'm I'm really I'm really meshed in with people now more than uh, being a an old football player. Right. Uh, and I, I, you brought up the the business aspect, and that's I want to talk about that a little bit. You know, you mentioned working in the off season um, in the real estate business. And then, so at what point, like, obviously you're learning a lot, then you start your own company. How, how did the timeline go on that? Did you wait till after you retired? And was this ever a question that you wanted to do something in this kind of field after you were done playing? Well, I, I was with the Henry Miller Company and Mr. Miller and David Donosky and all the people down there, Robert Grunham, and I can name all, all the, Ken Schulman, all the people I worked with and in, in, in who took over for me in the off season that, that uh, and allowed me to have, you know, those four or five or six months in the uh, mm -hmm. season. So I really started, I, I really liked the real estate firm. And, and, and you know, that was a bit at the beginning of the, the forefront of, uh, of representing the tenant. And I, I really felt that was a, a, a something that we could do. And that's what, and so the Staubach company, we, we really, uh, got started on representing t tenants and helping them locate their facilities, office industrial, and and then also uh, retail. So I learned a lot from Mr. Miller and uh, in the Miller Company, and I I wanted to stay with it. And uh, so I I, uh, I I did work in the off season. I had the Staubach coming. I had a, a partner named uh, Holloway. Holloway. It was called Holloway Staubach. And Robert wanted to be a developer, and I wanted to be a, a be in the service side of the real estate business and that's how we uh, uh so i i became you know robert did his development i i, I uh, started the Staubach company and our strength was um and we we had about 60 offices around the country and six about almost 1600 people wow. when we were uh we we were uh we yeah we sold the company to jones lang lasalle which was like 12 years ago so we we build build up a, a company, uh, and we just just had a lot of great people, and uh, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed, you know, I was I was more of, a, uh, you know, 
getting pe <laughs> having ideas and thoughts, and I could see all these people working really hard to to make sure that they listened to my thoughts and yeah. and, and they they did really well. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and so it it I I just I I just and I did enjoy the business world because I knew I had to do it too with our five children and uh, and, and Marianne was. Uh, but I, what, I, wanted me to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted me to be home yeah. all yeah. the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. that uh, would be a shock to the system if he was home constantly, yeah. for sure. I imagine well, there's I, a... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, there were a lot of mouths to feed and yeah. schools to pay. and Yeah, well, that's, that's a life. Tough. And he did start the company before he retired, though. He started yeah. in 1977. Well, th okay. th thank God I had a, I had a... I have a great... Still have a great wife. And <laughs> yeah, and yeah. All, I've always had a great wife. And because uh, you've, you know, you've allowed me to make sure that I'm trying to do what I'm trying to do. Right. And, and it's, it's a lot of it's family oriented, the, the real estate and everything. But uh, it, Marianne was always. Uh, uh, we make a good team. Yeah. Oh, you I guys really tell. do. You are so cute. In other words, we still like each other. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, that's not that's not nothing after 50, being 56 years. Exactly. Of, uh, yeah. Well, I feel like we need to stick on that topic for just a minute. It is almost Valentine's Day too. But what? It's funny because thinking about having you in here, I'm like a, a lot of things, questions that I had is like you guys giving advice to people because you've done so many amazing things and done them well. Um, and so I have a couple other advice questions, but let's start with marriage and, and to have a happy marriage and to, you know, make it all these years through all of the things that you guys have been busy with, all of the kids, all the grandkids. What advice do you give somebody about marriage and how to, how to make it? I think it's obviously real individual to each couple, but I think one of the really keys is obviously love. But then you really have to respect your partner in the same respect. Like Roger always has said that my job was just as important, if not more, than his mm -hmm. to be a stay-at-home mom. I mean, you know, and I... And it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to be a stay-at-home mom. It is not But easy. I, you know, when and you say, always say faithfulness. Yeah, I mean, obviously yeah, that's... I mean, I a think that's a, uh, marriage, I mean, it's... Some you know some people it doesn't work. I mean, but while you're married, you're, you know, you're uh, being faithful is is the key ingredient uh, mm -hmm. that that both of you uh, have to uh, make sure that that's part of the marriage. And uh, we, I think we uh, we've done it. Marianne was uh, had a few boyfriends. That, 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 <laughs> We were totally that. okay with well, that. A lot of guys. <laughs> he hasn't forgotten the doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a sense of humor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That, uh, that'll obviously, go a long way. Obviously. Yeah. And you talk about that. There was one more thing I wanted to ask about the real estate business. It, there may be a couple, but you mentioned the respect factor. And I read where it was a priority for you even early on to put women in positions of leadership and, um, you know, prominence why was that a concerted effort or was that something that just happened organically where did that come from well it it, it, it had a lot to do with my parents uh we uh, uh my mom really got it um you know i was an only child and she really she 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 went to work uh my dad was a good guy and and they uh they just really preached to me the um, uh, importance of uh of how you treat everybody. It doesn't matter what their color is, what their gender is. It's uh, they're human beings, and uh, and 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 I in in our country, you know, we I don't want to get into all that, but we, you know, we had a civil war over. We we've had a horrible discrimination in in, in, in this great country that we have. And mm -hmm. Really, and and even today, we're still uh, we're still we're still in, in the battle. It's it's. And uh, but I think my parents were really a great examples to me. And then I wanted to make sure that if I had a business, that I was going to try to do everything I could to make it uh, as diverse as uh, as it should be. And and, as, and, uh, and so so we really uh, on the the women's side, uh, we really had some great, uh, unbelievable uh, women uh, that that work for us. Uh, uh, one of them was a leader, a, a woman named Kay Cotter, and uh, but we 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 had uh, golly, I can I'll start talking about Susan Harley. So we there, there, we had we had uh, around the country really really a, a strong uh, 
and and it it was it, it was done because it's it makes makes total sense mm -hmm. and 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 in uh, our crazy world we're in right now it's we're still fighting that battle of uh, how we uh, how we treat each other yeah so we have to get into grandparenting. <laughs> so, okay, so it's five, the most fun job, right? Yeah, right, exactly. Five can, children. How many grandchildren? Fifteen grandchildren. And how many greats? Three greats and a fourth on the way in June. Our one of our granddaughters just got married a year ago. And okay, so she's gonna have a baby in June. And are they all around here? Do you? How often do you get to see them all? We get to see them frequently. Um, <laughs> Obviously, there there are three in college now, so those aren't. And one uh, grandson who graduated, and now he lives in Miami working. But we do see him a lot. In fact, uh, Valentine's, we do grandkids all come to our house for dinner and spend the night. Oh. And But now that so many of them are so much older, it's not a big deal to spend the night at right. me and Papa's. So <laughs> they just come for dinner. But... And we we're doing it tomorrow night, or Friday night, and we will have um, 15 there because we'll have some of the greats all for dinner. Oh, wow. I bet so, they love that. So yeah. how does grandparenting compare to parenting for you guys? Are you the kind of grandparents that are always saying yes and giving the ice cream and <laughs> making no. sure that the kids are always having fun, or, or how do you handle that? Pretty much so, <laughs> and, then, and then, you do, they, then you can send them home. I mean, they can't do free range. I mean, we yeah. do make them behave, but um, you know, it's it's. So I say, um, Jessica, our oldest granddaughter, when she was born, our youngest child was only seven, so we were still in the parenting yeah. thing, and I figured it really wouldn't be that much different, but it total different relationship, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so it's it's just fun. You can do whatever and then go, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> go home. And you know. Parenting wise, is there any like anything that you're especially proud of or any anything you felt like we really did this right? Or is there, you know, on the other side, is there anything that you're like, I wish we wish I could have a do over on <laughs> on on that one? Either or? Well, I think the do right is that we look at our adult children and see them as really productive adults, uh, moral people. They give back to the community. You know, they're on boards. They, and so that that's the benefit of I think, you know, those little decisions you make almost every day with your mm -hmm. children. Yeah, and you can see it paying off in them and, as adults. Right. Yeah. And I always tell people you cannot be your child's best friend. You uh -huh. know, you're the parent, they're the child. And then you become really good friends when they're adults. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's a that's a fun time when you get when you get to be, you know, have a glass of wine with your mom or yeah. crack open a beer with your dad and uh, you know, I remember my, my dad, when I was growing up, used to drink Yellow Bellies, Coors Original. <laughs> and um, I remember the first time it was like like I could sit down and like have a beer with my dad. And it was just like the coolest. Kind of mind-blowing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, holy <laughs> shit, here we are. Um, I am so, really yeah. grown up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you start to, yeah, like you said, then you carve yeah. out that friendship at that point in time. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. that's, that, you, you do, y'all do have a whole lot to, to be proud of. That's for sure. Very grateful. Um, it, so this is one thing that always not amazes me and when you look at you two and you know it, it seems like nowadays like you can dig deep enough and you can find something here or what like there's nothing nothing there's like y'all are like you, you do the right things you say the right things you're really good oh. people um you know unless you're doing something that you know you're keeping the biggest secret ever but that moral I mean I just feel like so much of us are giant shit shows and you guys are just like doing all the right stuff all the time We're, help us oh. Let's, can we <laughs> I would I know there's yeah well okay tell us thing. some stories to, to make us not think this not, no I'm just kidding nothing bad out there yeah anymore, that's for sure but we you know it's it's well Jeff always tells the story we were you know when Bennigan's uh was down in the Galleria on the first floor in the ice and one night uh, Jeff and Amy were going to skate and Roger and I were going to sit at Bennigan's and have dinner and 
So we're sitting there, we're eating, and they're out there skating. Also, and Amy comes to the side of the ring, Mom, Mom, Mom. We're like, No, go skate, go skate. And we're kind of ignoring them. Well, Jeff had fallen and broke his front tooth off. Oh, no. <laughs> and she's, you know, and we're just kind of like, oh, Okay. Yeah, I got my, I got my margarita, my, my no spinach deal. artichoke dip. We're doing just fine over here. Okay, so y'all are human. You oh, are yeah. human. This We're is, very human. No, this Believe is good me. to know. Yes, I well, think an, another way to <laughs> maybe even say what Emily was saying is it's in just, um, you know, reading about you guys and, and talking to a few people, what I thought was really cool is that when you mention your name, y'all's name, it wasn't, wow, what a good football player or or, oh, I can't, I want to talk about X, Y, Z when it comes to his career. It's what a good person. And I've heard so many people say that that they look up to you um, in so many ways, both of you guys, um, outside of sports, just for the way that you've lived your life and the things that you've been able to accomplish. So I'm just wondering, I guess, how that makes you all feel when you hear you, that. You know, you know, Julie, uh, it's... Um we're older than you think. <laughs> <laughs> you just had a birthday. They, they we all know how we're we, young. We got, we got most of the people that we run into don't remember we I ever played football. <laughs> 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 no, I'm really. You get up there, uh, you're. You know, I'm still. A, you know, I'm, a, I'm still a Dallas Cowboy, and and that uh, the you know, but but it's um, you know, it's 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 nice that. Uh, People do remember you, but you know, really, you, you get up. But right now, is uh, I, you know, I don't, I don't feel that I deserve anything. Uh, that I, I was very fortunate to to have the things that 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 I've had in my life. I mean, Marianne is at the top of the list, and uh, and uh, so it's it's. I think every day, uh, it, when you, especially when you get older, uh, I, of course, I, you know, I just turned eighty and. Uh, I didn't think I'd make it to 80. So, <laughs> You're doing great. You're, yeah. you're yeah. doing great. So, so, so I um, I'm, I'm, uh, very uh, grateful that uh, I have a uh, wonderful wife. And, uh, well, and I have a great husband. But I think, too, part of our whole journey is our faith journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and that's kind of anchored faith. you guys yeah. through yes. it all. And how did you carve out a, a, a place for yourself, your own identity, when you're married to Captain America, the, you know, author of the Hail Mary, the <laughs> Super Bowl champion, the Hall of Famer, the Heisman Trophy winner, service mm -hmm. to his country, like all the things. How do owner you... Of giant company, yeah. uh, owner yeah. of a giant company. Owner of a giant company, yeah. How do you carve out your own identity to where it's not just always about Roger? Well, first of all, I did, <clears throat> when the children were, you know, like in schools and everything, I always volunteered my time at school or I was on the school board at St. Rita's, you know, I did the Ursuline Jesuit auctions. So I always did things like that for me. But then once they had moved on, then I chose areas where I wanted to be involved in. And I was on the Catholic Foundation board for six years. Then I was on the VNA board, which was really nice because it led into my nursing. And, you know, I did Meals on Wheels every Thursday for 20 years. You know, so I did things for me, plus my hobbies. I learned to quilt and had my quilt group. And so, you know, I had my whole network of things. Things that you yeah. interested you. You know, you know Em, you, you mentioned uh, the Hail Mary. And uh, it's, um, it, you know, I, it's really hard on, the, you know, conversations like this because we, we've had so many people in our lives, and I'd like to mention... You know, it's all of them. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, but the Hail Mary uh, is is really that we were playing the Minnesota Vikings, and we at, at the end of the we had a really maybe a play or two left. We had no timeouts left, and I just told Drew to go deep, and uh, he made. You know, it wasn't a really a great pass. I mean, it got there though. I mean, it was a long. <laughs> he got time there. Right? Drew Pearson was a fantastic football player. I mean, he. And he made the catch, and so we're in the locker room uh, after the game, and they, uh, uh, the I just said to this this AP writer that uh, he said, "What were you thinking about when he threw that ball to Pearson?" And I said, "I, you know, I, mean, I'm, I, I was a Catholic kid from Cincinnati, and 
the Hail Mary. I, I could have said it was an Our Father or Glory Be. Or uh -huh. But I said, I don't know. I closed my eyes and said a Hail Mary. And so the, the, that I am really proud of that term. <laughs> you <laughs> should, should be. The Hail Mary is used now, and, it, and it's come out Everything. more. Uh, huh? and, and it, it really wasn't said. The NFL has recognized that it wasn't said in the NFL unless it was 30 years or 50, 100 years ago or something. And uh, so when you when you mentioned the, the, yeah. the, the Hail Mary is is I, I really am <laughs> proud of of when they somebody mentions the Hail Mary and they say you know and and and, uh, and Drew is too I mean Drew has made the play but uh, you know afterwards I just uh, I just said said something that the press uh, took off it's, and yeah. now it's used for Every, everything yeah, yeah. 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 they yeah, yeah. it's yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool yeah i remember you telling that when we did one of those jll lunches yeah. i remember you telling that story because they had something had happened recently this was like four or five years ago that something and they i remember it was big in the back in the news they for brought, something they and brought uh, the hail mary into it again. yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. To, to make it all full circle yeah when emily was trying to get you on this show she said i'm throwing out a hail mary <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. She said, let's throw out a Hail Mary, see what we get. It worked. It worked. <laughs> One more thing I can't, you mentioned Drew Pearson, and I have heard Drew tell the story um, about you, and, and it's not just him, but back to the whole, you know, doing the right thing, wanting to help others. But, you know, when Drew, you offered Drew to come work for you, maybe he did for a time, but then yeah. he wanted to go on his own, and you were the first investor in his company. Um, I can't remember, I'm blanking on who it was, but his son died and you told him he had a place. Charlie Waters. Yes, son. Charlie Waters. And he, that he had a place there. And that there were so many uh, people, whether they were former teammates or what, that you made such an impact on, that you guys as a family made such an impact on. It, what? How gratifying is that for you guys? And how important, you know, did that just, was that something you're like, I, this is, I'm, I, this is part of my mission? Or is it just things that happen like, okay, I see a place where I can help here? Well, you're you're the one well, that I, did the I, public I just, helping. I just thing. feel that it's a responsibility that you have because uh, those your teammates are you wouldn't be around if you didn't have these teammates and so it's it, it works both ways that you you want to show your love care and concern for uh, uh, your teammates and and for other people I think you know I think life is uh, giving a darn yeah. about someone other than your, just yourself and mm -hmm. uh, and. It, it, I think you know. We I think right now uh, we're we're going through some tough. This our country is. I, I I'm not going to get into all of it, but it's not all hunky dory right now. And it's it's you know people uh, criticizing other people instead of trying to look and see the best that yeah. uh, other people are. And uh, and they, so I, I I've. I've, 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 I've always, you know, I've been mad at times and things, but I, I, I really uh, understand that some people are, uh, uh, they're, they're experiencing something in, in, in their life at that moment. You just don't know what it is, and you, you, you don't, uh, I, I mean, I just, I, I, there's not, you know, I, I just don't, uh, I, I don't, just like anyone, really. Uh, yeah, like there's usually a reason. I have yeah. found someone's acting yeah. that way, right? A couple of guys on the Redskins, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or the Steelers. <laughs> or the Steelers. The Steelers, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I, you two are fantastic. Thank you so much for being with us. Well, it's welcome. so gracious of you all to come in. Um, I, thanks, thanks to Jeff um, for for kind of yeah. uh, massaging this thing. I understand he's going to uh, cut the grass for you guys. <laughs> and blame it on Jeff. Shane, I blame it on yeah. Jeff, but seriously, y'all, it was. I did say I'm going to throw up a Hail Mary, and, um, and I did, and and here and we it are, y'all. Well, it was so yeah. fantastic having well, was, you guys here. It was a pleasure. Um, you've been so lovely every time yeah. I've seen you, and you're so beautiful. Oh, and, well, thank you. Um, you're all right too, Roger. <laughs> um, so, so we have to end the show. Our last thing oh, yeah. is, you guys look at this camera, and at the end, we say "Mom game out," and we throw up peace signs. We're throwing out um, another Hail Mary. Yeah, Hail Mary. <laughs> <laughs> so you throw up the peace signs, and you say "Mom game." Out. Okay. Are you ready? One, two, three. Mom, Mom game. game out. out. Oh.